We're reading today from Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Matthew 4 verse 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh, taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came, and ministered unto him. Not yet, not yet. Okay, get your hand up there. Don't that's that's, that's, you that's just the next, there. that's just the okay. next slide, so uh, that's all. I'll call you, Randy, don't worry. Ten minutes. Okay. I always think it's interesting because the passage starts with the Holy Spirit leading Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted. Sometimes we, we wonder, why does God do the things He does to us? Why would God put us in a situation where He knows we're going to have the challenges that we have? And here we see that, that the Holy Spirit deliberately leads Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted. Now it's interesting, I want you to think about it because we always think that the devil comes to tempt us to do bad things. We'll talk about this in a minute, but the devil doesn't always come to tempt us to do bad things. He just tempts us to be hear his voice and do things that we need to be in control of. You'll know what I'm talking about because when God is speaking to you and he says, you know, you need to go and spend some time alone with me and seek me, and you say, there's another voice that says to you, Oh, just one more television show. And you say, well, which voice do I listen to? And that, that's the key to this whole thing for us, is which voice do I listen to? Because you see, God is drawing us to listen to His voice. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Right? It doesn't do you any good to hear the voice and not follow Him. It says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And the enemy also comes and he says, you know what? I want to get some of these sheep to hear my voice and follow me. And it, and it really comes down to whose voice are you the most used to listening to, right? I want you to think about that because that's really what it's all about in your day-to-day -day struggles is which voice are you the most familiar with and which one are you listening to the most? Because if you're struggling over and over again with the same temptation, maybe you want to look at whose voice you're comfortable listening to and why you keep saying yes to that voice. And why aren't you listening to the other voice? Because the Bible says, with every temptation, God also makes a way of escape. So are you going to listen to the way of escape? Or are you going to listen to the way of temptation? You know, it's interesting that the devil will often say to you, why don't you go upstairs and sit down and get yourself something to eat? Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting something to eat, but there is something wrong with getting something to eat if you've already eaten and you should be doing something else. Or eat, like I say, with a television or... Uh, just sit down on the couch and you say, no, if I sit down on the couch, I know what will happen. i got things that I know I'm supposed to do. i got to go outside and do this or i got to go do that. Once you sit down on that couch, right, that's the first step in yielding. Oh, it feels so good to sit on the couch. Maybe I'll just put my head on the armrest here for a little while. Oh, maybe I'll just put my feet up on this end here. Right? And then it's morning. Right? It's morning. And that whole day has vanished away never to be seen again. Now in this particular story it says that Jesus was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and the reason for him to be tempted was one that he could overcome and he could prove to us that by the power of God we can overcome. Right? 
He didn't use anything that you don't have access to. Okay? And it says that when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. You know what? Some of us, it's 20 minutes and we're hungry. Yeah, he went 40 days and 40 nights and he's hungry, right? I mean, I can imagine he's, he's seeing Twinkies everywhere, right? You know? Um, but it doesn't say that. It says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Obviously, the devil doesn't come to you and he doesn't say to you, if you be the Son of God, but he says, if you be a follower of the Son of God. You ever notice how we get duped into doing things by some challenge that is thrown before us? If you're such a good Christian, if you're such a good Christian, then uh, show me how good a Christian you are. Well, Jesus doesn't fall for the temptation. He doesn't fall for the trap. Jesus doesn't respond by getting drawn into some battle the devil wants to do on the devil's terms. He gets into the battle on God's terms, right? And he says, in verse 4, And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, if you're going to memorize one scripture that might be helpful to you, that's one. Man doesn't live by bread alone. As bread is such a temporary thing, right? Such an important thing, but a temporary thing. Man doesn't live by bread alone. We need to hear the voice of God. Right? There isn't a single person in this room today that doesn't need to hear the voice of God. You might hear them reading the scriptures. You might hear them in a dream or a revelation. You might uh, have a, a voice that speaks to you on the inside. All of those can be tested according to scripture that they are in fact the word of God. Right? Man does not live by bread alone, by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil takes him up into the holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thy dash thy foot against a stone. The next thing you need to understand is the devil can quote scripture better than you can. Right? But all he can make it sound so nice, so right. Right? Have you ever fallen for one of those challenges that he gives you about that? Like, right? God will take care of you, right? I, I know lots of people who have um, left their job and said, God's going to pay my bills. I just really believe strongly about that. Well, you know, God does do that. But you, but you better be sure it's God, right? Otherwise, what happens? You're out there. God doesn't supply for you. Not because God doesn't want to supply for you, but because you're not being, walking in obedience to God. And now you're out there and you're discouraged and everybody around you is discouraged and now you've got to start over again. I remember a friend of ours who uh, went to a healing meeting and everybody was getting healed and he decided he wanted to get healed too so he believed that he was healed and he threw his glasses away on the way home. Problem was, he didn't get healed. And so he had to go to the doctors and get a new prescription and spend some money on glasses. God can heal you, but it's got to be God. This isn't about us making something happen. This is about us walking with God. This is about us hearing the voice of God. If you're just going to be presumptuous and fall for every challenge that comes your way, you're going to find yourself in some very uncomfortable and awkward situations. In verse 7, Jesus answers that challenge and he says, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Right? Let God be the initiator of those things. Yes, let's seek His face. Let's bring before Him those things. But if God is in it, He's going to lead us in the steps to take and the fruit is going to manifest itself to follow up on that. Verse 8, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It's easy for us to worship things that are around God that aren't God. Right? We can easily get caught up in a whole bunch of stuff that isn't really God. Right? You can get caught up in praise music, you can get caught up in teachings about angels, you can get caught up in teachings about the Holy Spirit, you can get caught up in a whole bunch of things, and you can seek after all of that and not really be worshipping God. And the danger of that is that we make what God gave us for good into idolatry. 
false worship. And Jesus was very clear and he says, Thou shalt worship the Lord God and him only shalt thou serve. Now it's a difficult life sometimes to discern some of these things, but God wants to speak to us. And it's interesting, and then it says, And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels come and minister unto him. It's an interesting story, the temptation of Jesus. It's interesting because Jesus, having all the ability to do all of the things that Satan had said for him to do, like he could have spoke to the stones and made them bread. He could have done whatever he wanted. But he did the thing that was the right thing to do. The godly thing to do. He used God's revelation to answer the challenge. Right? Not some idea he had. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, we have the beginning of the Lord's Prayer again. And I think it's, it's so interesting to see this question come up when the disciples want to learn how to pray. Have you ever wanted to learn how to pray? Or did that come naturally to you? In Luke 11, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, so Jesus is praying, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. That's kind of a funny thing, because Jesus was just praying. Why didn't you just pay attention to what he was praying? Like, why didn't you just copy the example he already was doing? But they wanted something concrete. They wanted something specific. You know, we all want some shortcut. I remember when I was young, and... Uh, my sister Carolyn, who's here in the front seat, front table here, um, we used to have nighttime prayers when we would go to bed. And our mom would come in and you know, pray with us and things like that. And, and Carolyn had, uh, God bless her heart, had a long prayer list. She prayed for everyone, missionaries, family, by name, by situation, you know, whatever. I had a different style. And my style was, uh, let's keep this as short and to the point as possible. And mine was... God bless everyone in the whole world except the devil. Amen. <laughs> I covered all the missionaries. I covered the family. I covered everybody. And so in that, there's this sense where we have this idea. When we're asking God things, sometimes we're asking God to give us something, not because we really want to know the answer, but more because we want to make it as easy on ourselves as possible, right? God, give me a quick prayer that will cover it all so I know I've satisfied you, but at the same time, um, I don't have to work it through. You know, I don't really want to do the work thing. I'm kind of... You know, yeah. that part we could leave out. That'd be great with me. Yeah. And in verse 2, he said unto them, And when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. And give us day by day our daily bread. Now that's the part we want to sort of focus in on. Is Give us day by day our daily bread. The walk with God is not a prayer that you say once at the beginning of your life and the next one at the end of your life, and that's good. That's not how it is. But the walk with God is uh, give us a day by day our daily bread. Give us day by day our daily revelation. Give us day by day the things that we need to learn and understand. You know, we are not able to understand the great things of God. God has to give it to us in little pieces. God has to give it its revelation as it talks about building precept upon precept. You can't understand this if you have never learned the foundational truths about who God is. And so we need to walk with God day by day. We need to listen to God day by day. We need to seek God day by day. And as those temptations come then, we have the day by day revelation from God. God spoke to me this, how I'm supposed to respond in that situation. Rather than hoping that, like I did, that we had the blanket prayer to cover it all. And now you can just go and do what you want. Woohoo! Right? Right? That's what we want. I mean, the selfishness in us is that we want to do as much of us and as little of anything else as possible. So the work that God's doing in us is teaching us to be disciplined. That's what disciple means. It means uh, disciplined in the way of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus. And so we need to be like Him. Paul's great prayer was that I might know Him. Right? That I might know Him. 
in the power of his resurrection. That's the part we like, right? Oh God, I just want to go out into the world in the power of your resurrection. Let every time I speak, people fall on their knees and repent. You know, that's what we think. But then he goes on, and the next step in the prayer is, and the fellowship of your suffering. Oh, well, easy on the part there, God, with the fellowship of the suffering. Right? Easy on that. Being made conformable along to your death. <clears throat> See, God has done a great thing in us. He set us free through the blood of Jesus, and now He wants us to learn how to walk with Him. And you know what's hard about it? Is that every single one of us in the room has to do it in a sense alone with Him. We can encourage one another. We can pray for one another. But there's no group plan. It doesn't work like that. Okay, you're in because there was five people out of the seven that were good, so we got to cover you're in. It doesn't work like that. You have to know Him for yourself. You have to learn to walk for Him yourself. You have to go through testings and trials by yourself, but He is faithful. He is with you to lead you into that. 